today. I'm looking forward to it. Okay. Um, so I, 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 I realize I am standing in the way of you going for lunch. And so uh, please don't be too angry with me. I will try and be very, very quick. So uh, very quickly, I'm going to tell you what uh, I'm doing, why I'm doing it, and then I'm going to flash. Uh, flash in the United States means you, uh, there's a football game and you take it all off. Uh, in, in Africa, flash means uh, somebody flashes you, gives you a quick call on your mobile phone so that if their minutes are running out, you can call them, okay? <laughs> and so I'm going to flash you guys. I'm going to show you lots of my slides, and you can call me back later, okay? <laughs> so that's what we're going to do. So what am I doing? Uh, first and foremost, um, I'm working in uh, rural Africa. I'm very, very big on rural Africa. Uh, I think rural Africa is going to become urban Africa very soon. Uh, my colleague and recent Nobel Prize winner, Paul Roma, is very big on cities. And what I tell him always is that the next cities in this world are all African cities. Uh, the big European cities have reached their max, and we're going to see lots of new cities, which today are rural areas. So that's the space I'm going into, okay? That's first and foremost. Uh, second, I'm working in the area of smallholder agriculture. I believe that that's the, way, the place where fintech is going to be important. That's the way, place where industrialization is going to be important. Uh, the United States industrialization took place uh, on the American farm. Uh, even the telephone was uh, somebody uh, put in a wire and an empty tin here and empty tin and talking to the person on the other farm. So again, I'm very, very big on agriculture. Um, I have been working in the field, and again, I'm going to flash you my slides in just a second, but I'm just going to tell you what the big results are. I've been working uh, in rural Africa. Um, I have big centers in rural, rural, I have a center in rural Africa uh, dealing with the farmers uh, firsthand. I'm going to tell you all about that. And uh, with the farmers and with the Ghana government, we've created my favorite fintech, okay? And that's a commodities exchange, all right? So a commodities exchange is nothing other than massive piece of software and laws and regulations, and that allows people to, to work. So that's what I'm going to be talking to you about. Uh, no offense to the, uh, my colleague. Uh, Isaac, uh, no offense at all, but when we African nations received our independence, we wanted to industrialize quickly. We thought that the way to go was to open uh, uh, stock markets, equity markets. So you have equity markets in almost every sub-Saharan African country, but there are no commodities exchanges. Why? I mean, we've got one in Ethiopia, and just November, we opened one in Ghana. Okay, and I just think that this is the time to open them all across Africa, and we should have done that in the 60s. Chicago did it 100 and something years ago. Okay, so anyway, that's my punchline, and uh, so I've got a bunch of papers, uh, uh, a, a large, very large randomized controlled trial uh, in place in Ghana right now. I'm looking for collaborators, uh, anybody who wants to join forces, work with us. I've got a very, very big grant, huge grant, which is paying for the RCT. Come on board if you want. Now I go to Flash. <laughs> All right, so here goes the flashing, and how much time do I have? Okay, I've got some time. Here. All right, so let's flash away, okay? Finance markets. Uh, I, thank, um, I thank Victor for the invitation, and among other things, um, as you will see, the, the, the principal project here was to show that if you give African um, uh, smallholder <coughs> farmers regulated, consistent markets, i.e. a commodities exchange, they are going to do wonders. And our whole project is to prove that. Okay, so uh, call me back in a year or two years. I'll give you results which show that these guys are awesome. The thing I want to particularly congratulate Victor for is I didn't realize the finance con connection until he called me up. Okay, and so I've now understood that the finance part is actually really crucial. And so you'll see that in this slide, all right? Okay, so I thank Victor again. We've done some past work on mobile phones, uh, uh, helping smallholder farmers bargain better with traders. We got uh, big results on that. That's a complete paper. Uh, this time around, uh, African um, agricultural trading is through bilateral markets. The farmers produce uh, their crops. Traders go into the farms. 
they uh, haggle with the farmers. And a very interesting point on gender relations, most of the farmers are men. Most of the traders who the farmers are scared of are women. Okay? So the women go there and the traders are all complaining that the women are exploiting them. Hooray for the women. <laughs> so that's the way uh, trading is taking place currently. Commodities exchanges, of course, are a centralized market, right? And so it occurs in Accra. You are at your farm gate. You produce your goods. You bag them and you send them to the nearest warehouse. At the warehouse, you get a warehouse receipt. You call your broker and that receipt is traded for you in Accra. You tell the broker, I need the money now. I need it in three months. I need it when the price goes to this. You and the broker, you negotiate. That's what a commodities exchange is. It's nothing other than a piece of software, some uh, warehouses, and some laws. Okay, so I've been spending the past couple of years doing that with a team in Ghana. All right. Uh, ba -ba -ba -bum. Victor, this is in your honor, okay? And so, uh, Think of the traditional system, commodities exchange system. Finance is huge. Victor uh, um, uh, told me a lot about that. What kinds of financial things do you, get, do you have? Farmers, when they are starting their production, they need production loans, business loans, okay? I want to produce, okay? So that's the straightforward loan. It's at this stage you have a lot of adverse selection, moral hazard, people not paying back their loans. You've got car transport loans. You've actually produced this uh, maize. You've bagged them. But you're at your farm and you've got to take it to the warehouse or you've got to take it to the place where these things are sold. These farmers can't even get that, that money. Okay? It's that bad. Post-harvest losses, that's where it occurs. All right? I've produced the maize, but what do I do with it now? And even the money to get it to the uh, market is hard to get. Traders, the women, give uh, farmers loans. Okay, we can come back to that later on if you want. And there's some really cool people, they're called brokers. And what these brokers do is they go to a farmer and say, if you produce this for me, I've got this company in the capital that I'm going to sell your maize to that person. Okay, and they're, they're a, a group of market actors. Got to watch out for them. They're really sophisticated. They're going to do wonders. All of that is in the bilateral traditional uh, sector. When you go into the commodities exchange model, Unfortunately, the literature focuses almost entirely on warehouse receipts. What are warehouse receipts? You put your maize in the warehouse, they give you a piece of paper. You can get a loan based on that, right? And so the whole literature, what happens with the, you have to first of all produce the thing, and when would you get a loan? You get a loan today if you need money today, and you think later on the prices are going to go up. That's the only time you get a warehouse receipt, right? And so the whole literature is focused on making these poor smallholder farmers become gamblers, right? They're speculators. You, you all with me? Okay, so the loans that we are, we're spending a lot of time on in the literature, I think is misplaced, and probably we're thinking too much about it, okay? Anyway, that's what's in the literature. There's something T plus 1 plus T plus N, which is um, anybody who's, who buys something from the commodities exchange, you've got to pay immediately, right? The buyers, the um, Guinness, okay? Guinness buys a lot of things, are going to be a buy. They need to pay immediately, and sometimes they don't have the money. They need to wait till N periods, okay? And so that's what we call uh, T plus N. And so even on the other side of the market, there's need for finance. And so, again, thank you, Victor, okay? And then the whole issues of futures contracts, forward contracts, all you finance people, you know all of, all of those things. But again, it's another form of finance which is going to be important, right? Anyway, since I'm just flashing, let me just keep going on. Uh, people who need business loans, this is maize. I could tell you about banking and uh, the, the, the reason why um, banks are not in this sector is exactly as you said. What they get out of the national government is easy money. And we have some data on that, so we can talk later on. Um, transportation is going to be important. Okay, this is all the flashing, okay? Uh, that woman there who looks like uh, she's poor and everything, she's one of the traders. Okay, some of these women, you go into their little huts, and inside there, underneath the roof, they've hidden 30,000 US dollars. Okay? Don't mess with these women, okay? 
All right. Loans from traders, uh, commissions from brokers. I'm flashing here, right? Warehouse receipts. Let's keep flashing. Okay. So, um, what have we what have been been able to do? Okay. So, as I said, speaking to the farmers, I went to the Ghana government with a small team. Uh, about a, two years ago, November, we've opened up a commodities exchange, okay? So that's done, hooray. Uh, next, we continue talking to the farmers. So this is their opening, this is Ghana's president opening the uh, commodities exchange. I'm flashing, flashing, commodities exchange, commodities exchange. There's a lot of math there. We've got a theoretical paper which shows what happens when you go from a bilateral model to a centralized model. So search theorists, Nash bargaining, all of that stuff is there. This is the part I wanted. So this is joint work with Chris Udry. We've got some funders to help, uh, who, which have enabled us to do the following. We have taken 100 uh, communities all across the nation, Ghana. Ghana is the size of the United Kingdom. Uh, it's about 30 million people. We've got 100 communities. We randomized 50 of them. We're going to be working with them to do what? We are going to those 50 communities, and some of them are in the deep uh, village. We've got some funding, and we are going to essentially encourage them to work with the commodities exchange, right? And so we're going to tell these people, we're going to help you. We've got money to get you car transport. Uh, we're going to teach you how this thing works. We're going to get you a broker. And we're going to cajole you into going into the commodities exchange, okay, for 50 of the communities. Other 50 of the communities, we are not going to do that, okay? They're going to be our control group, okay? Then we're going to let the clock roll. In a year's time, we're going to go back, and we're going to see this group versus that group. Has there been a difference, okay? It is my thesis that many of the things we do in development economics, you want, for example, why don't farmers take more loans, okay? There are papers which ask, why don't farmers use fertilizers more often? Why don't they use better seeds more often? My own opinion is because they're scared if they try these risky things to them, what happens if they produce everything like you said and they can't sell it, right? Okay, and that's a huge amount of risk which we as researchers, we don't model when we're writing our papers, okay? And so we just say, ah, these stupid farmers, how come they're not using fertilizers? If we were in their shoes and we had their decision problem, maybe we wouldn't either. Because fertilizer costs money, you produce all of these things, and you can't sell it, right? Now you have a commodities exchange, and we are going to guarantee to these people, if you produce, you will sell, okay? That's what a commodities exchange does. Half of what I'm doing with the exchange is to make sure that they are off-takers, people who are buying from the commodities exchange, okay? All right. And so we go to the 50 communities. We tell them that if you work with us, we're guaranteeing you that you will sell your goods. All right. And so then we're going to see whether there's a systematic difference on all of these metrics that we do, we, which are standard in development economics: better seeds, fertilizers, loans, etc. These things, Victor. Again, uh, there was these uh, different loans that we had out there. We're going to measure whether. Communities that don't have the commodities exchange are at low levels of these loans. Those that do are at higher levels of loans. Okay? That's the exercise. Okay, so this is work that I'm doing, at least the part on the uh, RCT is with Chris Udry, who is currently at Northwestern. And now we flash a bit more. Okay. So this is the baseline. We're interviewing people. Baseline interviews, baseline interviews. Baseline data, the different languages, regions, languages. Education level, a lot of the people are, have zero education, primary education, and a lot of middle school education, okay? All right, so these are relatively uneducated people. We're teaching them how to use our mobile phone apps. We're teaching them about finance and brokers and all of that. And I have faith in those poorly educated smallholder farmers. Different crops, all of these are baseline things. And this is the uh, RCT. So red are our control groups, 
Green are the treatment groups, okay? 50-50. Okay? And it's all across the country, as you can see. And so these, what's that? In the middle of the country, there is nothing there. That's an area, it's between the Bronga Hafa region and the northern region. Next to nobody lives there. It's very sparsely populated there. Okay? All right. And so we go into the regions. And so for the treatment communities, we literally go into those communities and tell them, this is what a commodities exchange is. This is how you can sell your goods. Let us help you. Okay? So we are very rapidly modernizing. If you call co going to commodities exchange a modernizing thing, we are modernizing these uh, people in the 50 communities. All right? We have about a total of, uh, yeah, I'll just keep it at that. Okay, flashing. So these are people who are carrying their maize from the villages and then bringing it to us by the road. Okay? Uh, the yellow thing is a moisture meter. And so here is a theoretical economist going into the field here. You have to test how much moisture that, that the maize has, the corn has. And if it's more than 13%, we won't take it, okay? All right, so this is, and so here we've taken it to a, a, a warehouse, they're drying it. There's a guy who's really happy, he's got his money. <laughs> you see that smile on his face, you know? <laughs> so hopefully um, all our 50 communities will be this happy when we're done, all right? Uh, we tell them prices, and part of what we're doing is we're educating them. We're telling them that, you know, if you're going to do speculation, do it properly. Here are the prices, this is what the price is going to be in the future. Do the math, okay? So a lot of what we do, that's, all, that's what it is. Uh, via text, you get your SMSs. Victor, we're going to do all of that. There's a theory paper. Thank you all very much. <laughs> Thank you very much for that very much abbreviated uh, <coughs> presentation. I think there must be lots of questions, so this time we've got a little more time to collect. Okay, thank you very much, I mean, yeah, yeah, for this uh, nice presentation. I really agree with you why, I mean, we didn't think about the commodity exchange for a long, long, long time. And actually, I'm involved in the same type of project in Kodiwa. I know Ghana, you are always first, I mean, many, many things, but yeah, we are invo I'm involved in the same type of project, I mean, and one of the things we decided, I mean, to do, basically, to go ahead with it, was basically to train, really, all the players, basically. Then we start training, I mean, the buyers, the bankers, and the cooperatives, and so on, so on. Then when we, we set this, uh, really, tools, actually, then people really understand it, then we can get more, more, actually, liquidity, and so on. But, let's get, but what you present, actually, you didn't talk about the buyer side, right? You only talk about the producers, I mean, the control for your setting is that to encourage, I mean, producers to, to come to the commodity exchange. But you didn't talk about, I mean, people will be buying the, the commodities, right? You didn't talk about those ones. Are you the one who will be buying it? Or, I mean, that, that side, I mean, because, I mean, it looks like you, you assume that there will always be buyers uh, coming to the stock exchange to buy it. And so on. Uh, if you can clarify that, that would be. That's exactly what I'm the most scared of, okay? And so the many commodity exchanges fail in Africa, all right? Uh, the farmer side is easy, okay? We, we know how to deal with that. But people who are going to buy it off, that's the hard thing. So uh, one thing we did was T plus 1 to T plus N. Repayment immediately versus repayment later on. That was because of that side of the market, okay? And I have a team right now going out. I mentioned Guinness. Guinness is now going onto the platform. Uh, other f so that's a big deal. Uh, very fascinating uh, study. Very, very quick question. Do you have uh, already any idea about the percentage of people in the control and in the treatment villages that are picking up the, the 
using the command question. Because especially if people in the control groups are going to use as well, the right. uh, you know the problems that yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Um, I'm Sostenes Kewe. I come from Tanzania. We also have um, the Commodities Exchange that has started working. I'm interested in your experience um, on two um, fronts. The first one is this area of agriculture is very politicized, as you know, um, for various reasons. Food security, you, know, you, you focus on far smallholder farmers. Politicians are always, you know, um, on the limelight. As you design this um, experiment, you know, how are you engaging the politicians in the way that they may not really, you know, endanger the possibilities of this working in the future. Then the second part, you know, um, goes to how this is being thought from the systems perspective. So it, it builds on the other uh, person who has just raised. We see it on the farmer side, which is on the seller side. We don't see it on the buyer side, but that is that is one side of the things. The other part is the entire ecosystem, how it's working to make sure that, you know, the T plus one, you know, P plus N, if you are going to pay the farmer instantly, that means you have to have a payments ecosystem that supports that. So how is this being thought through to give that uh, farmer uh, uh, that useful experience as we saw this guy being very happy when he receives cash? Okay, so very quickly, uh, I forgot to mention in the first response that you mentioned Cote d'Ivoire and Ghana and Cote d'Ivoire have always had this competition. Uh, we're, we're, we're essentially the same people. We're all Akan. It's the French and English that put a border, so we're always competing. So let's talk a little bit, and I'm going to try and make Ghana win, okay? <laughs> let's put it out there. Um, the issues about control group and treatment group, we have to be careful. So this is, um, I think, it's an issue of spillovers, right? And so uh, one issue is that uh, people in the control group may inadvertently get into access into the commodities exchange. So that's a fear. I haven't told the commodities exchange itself not to go into the control groups. I'm just hoping that they're so busy opening up the place that it won't happen. They're focusing on the cities. I did a random uh, search a, um, among all communities. So I think it's unlikely, okay, that especially the, the far out ones. The treatment communities, all of them are excited. As soon as I go there, everybody wants to be on board. Uh, which is not surprising. It's a new thing. It's going to help them. They understand it. They get it. Okay? Uh, Tanzania, um, uh, I wish you guys well in your uh, development. We're a little bit ahead of you. We're using the same uh, similar people uh, who are starting it. Um, uh, keeping the politicians out is extremely important. So anytime I go into a village, the first thing I say is I am not a politician. <laughs> I'm not coming to give you anything. Uh, politicians in Ghana, what they do is when they have farmers groups, they give out Coca-Cola and, uh, you know, refreshments, right? Uh, I have intentionally decided never to do that. So there's no confusion. I am not giving you anything. Uh, I am not a politician. Come here if you want to learn something. So that's one of the things that I've done, okay? Uh, payment systems. Uh, Ghana, even though it's not getting that much credit as Kenya does, for example, but mobile money is big in the country, really big in the country, okay? And the banking system is fairly well developed. I think Ghana's banking system outside of perhaps South Africa is one of the best, maybe Kenya, uh, uh, outside of those two are probably, is probably the best in, uh, in West, definitely the best in West Africa. Um, uh, Leonard, I think you'll forgive me by, for <laughs> better than that in, okay? Um, so, so it's something that, you know, we've been working on. We've been working with the uh, financial uh, systems. We've got a, a set of rural banks. These are banks in villages which are part of the commodity exchange system. So um, it's an issue, but we've, we've addressed that. Okay? Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you.